if we know that an LLM usage can affect the cognitive load, what happens when we bring an AI tool into a therapy in situation? If you get it into companionship, what then if you throw it further forward and you get yourself involved in a psychosis where you begin to believe that the AI is godlike? you have a certain amount of fixation or it amplifies any delusions and encourages. Where are we in the effect in the brain when we get to those sort of places? In other words, how close are we to the theme of the film Her? Where it, 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 before AI was a thing, but it was more you had your chat friend, uh, like a Siri type chat friend, but it, it had all the trappings of everything you're describing. If some kind of LM it will be invoked into someone has some kind of social adjustment problems and then you have them interact with something that's not another human being, but maybe can learn from who and what you are and, and figure out how to dig you out of whatever hole you're in. Absolutely. And I think for, first of all, right, it's unfortunately even less developed topic, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, I cannot like, it, it's awful topic. So we're going to get into this, but I cannot, I cannot like not make this, Awful joke, kind of. Hey Siri, I have problems with relationships. It's Alexa. <laughs> it's not. <Siri. laughs> I it's a, you know, joke for very heavy topics. So I need to preface it immediately that we have even less data and less uh, scientific papers, preprints or peer-reviewed papers about this. So most of what we have right now, uh, we personally received after our paper around 300 emails from uh, husbands and wives telling us that their partners now have multiple agents they're talking to in bed. And I immediately thought about the South Park episode from a couple like years ago, like with Tegrity and like that, you know, farm as like literally, but we have much less of scientific information about this. What we have, what we know, right? that also coming from our group's research, that there is definitely amplification of loneliness. That's what we know as a research. And wow. some of other papers are showing up right now. There is potential, and again, a lot of people who are pro-AI therapy pointing out on advantages of the fact that it is cheap. It's $20 a month compared to hours that can cost up to hundreds of dollars a month, right? But there, there is definitely, you know, a lot of drawbacks here. And the drawbacks is we see that because there is not such a regulated space, it still can basically give you suggestions that are not good. So you knew that earlier, a couple months ago, for example, the chat GPT, I'm going to give you an example on chat GPT because, again, we are focused on chat GPT, but the ones are actively, actively publicized at least. It actually suggested, you, you know, different heights of them bridges in new york if you say that you lost your job right so can not smart enough to do this connection that maybe that's not what you need to give response to and apparently right from this awful recent situation where a teenager 16 16 so so young mm -hmm. unfortunately you know suicided uh and now uh ChatGPT, open ai and sam altman are being sued apparently what happened is that a uh, conversation from the spokesperson of OpenAI pointing out that they thought when a person is talking about suicide not to engage at all, just say, here are the numbers, this is what you need to do, and stop talking. But they thought that experts told them that, hey, it might be a great idea to try to dig people a bit out. But it looks like in this case it still failed because uh, from the conversations that have been reported, we don't know how authentic they are, it looks like it's suggested to keep it away from parents. But my question is, why at 16 years old he was even allowed to use a tool that is so, so, so unstable in the responses, really? Can hallucinate any time of the day in any direction. So I think that's where the danger comes from. And of course, you know, loneliness. We know that, you know, pandemic of loneliness is, you know, this term that was coined in, I believe, 1987 for the first time at a conference, like pandemic of loneliness. That's the whole business, right? Because it was, think about it. If you hook someone up on an LLM at 13 years old because the school a county decided that they want to use an LLM in the school, by the age of 18, you have a full-fledged user right, a user of an LLM, and, uh, you know, it's like, you know, again, who calls people users, like drug dealers and software developers. That's kind <laughs> of Damn. Yeah, but it's true, right? 
So, Natalia, if it's an age-appropriate scenario, yeah. these are the ramifications of your study. So, um, as any concerned parent would look at that and say, well, I want the best for my child's development, and this may not be the best yeah. for the critical thinking, for the cognitive development within the young person's brain. So, with these ramifications, how has the AI world reacted to your study, and what are the chances that they'll embrace what your conclusions will be? Well, I mean, we saw some of it, right? So, well, first of all, right, uh, we saw that uh, we obviously don't know if this is direct response or not, so we're not going to speculate there whatsoever. Mm. But several weeks, just very few, like three, four weeks after actually our paper was released, OpenAI released study mode for yes. ChatGPT, right? And uh, it's I think maybe some sense it should have been released from the beginning, I am just saying. But, you know, if you have a button that can immediately pull you back in default mode, who's going to use that study mode, right, altogether? Like, who, who, like, I don't need to run a study here. We know some people might, but not everyone. Because, again, back to the brain. Brain will look for a shortcut. Shortcut is the response is here. And I can go do all the other cool stuff. So who's going to actually use it, right? We still need studies on that. That's the first point, right? Second point, of course, age is important because, again, the brains that are being developing right now are potentially the highest risk. Because here we all are, we all were born long before the stack existed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of AI developers and people who are running these companies are all, all the folks who, again, were all born long before the tech existed. So they learned the hard way how to ask questions, art of the deal. You know, going through all of that, they know how to ask a question. What about those who actually are just born with the technology? Will they even know how to ask a question? And back to the point, right, of the age, I don't think it's ultimately only for young, of course. We do need to look for the older, right, for also just younger, I mean, young adults, of course. Everyone is talking about humanity's last test. I would call it, we are on the verge of humanity's last and I'm sorry, I know you might need to blurb this term out, but what I mean here, obviously, intimate relationships for people, right? With the promise of this growth. You said humanity's last. Yes. Okay. Just, <laughs> yes. Oh, believe me, I heard it. I was we just are, like. Uh, we all heard that. Yeah, I was like, God bless you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, that's crude. But it's back to this point of designing again this interestingly appealing ladies and gentlemen and whatnot in these short skirts whatever it is who's gonna go make those babies who will pay those taxes i'm just saying right and again very famous expression no taxation without representation right i do not want my prime minister or secretary of defense use a random algorithm to make decisions. I, I'm paying my taxes for them to think, not for an algorithm to think for them, right? So there is a lot of these repercussions. But back to ultimately the point, actually, is anyone taking this seriously, right? We just need more human-focused work on AI. Like, I remember when the paper went viral, right? We didn't even put any press release. We literally uploaded it to archives. This is a service where you call these papers that didn't go through peer reviews yet. We literally, I didn't po post, no, not a single it's a open. preprint service, basically. Yeah, it's a preprint yeah. service, right? And no one, no one, neither the lab, nor any of the authors posted anything on social media. We just went about our days. Mm -hmm. Two days later, it goes viral. And then I'm going on. That's because that's because the LLM posted it for you. <laughs> yeah, obviously, right. And then people use the LLM to summarize, but that's another story, right? Like I'm going on X, and uh, actually I, I have an account, but I'm not using it. A lot of academics switched from X to like other platforms that we are using. But I'm going there, and apparently I learned that there are people who are called AI influencers. These days. I didn't know that this is the term, but apparently these AI influencers they post these AI breakthroughs of the week, and I. Went our paper, oh my God, made a cut. It's breakthrough number seven. And I like scrolled through this influence. The person has tons of following, whatever, I don't know, real bots, whatever. I'm scrolling and I saw like 20 of these posts for 20 weeks. All of the posts are about GPU, multi trillion deal here, multi billion deal here, more GPUs. I'm like, where is human here? Where, where, where is human? Where are we evaluating the impact of this technology on humans? Why only our paper made it number seven? And where are the papers, right? 
So that's, I think, something where the focus needs to shift, right? So if these companies do want to be on the right side of history, right? Because that's like social media, but on steroids, much worse. You do not talk to a calculator about your feelings. So people who compare it to calculators, they're so, so, so wrong, right? But hey, it's going to get much, much worse with profiliation without any validation, any, any guardrails, right? So we do need to look into that heavily, right? <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.